Gut bacteria impact skeletal muscle mass and function. So let's start off by having a look at what antibiotic treatment does to muscle mass and function in young mice. So antibiotics reduce gut bacterial content. And we can see that here, where on the y-axis, we've got micrograms of bacterial DNA per gram of feces plotted against time. In this case, this was a four-week study of antibiotic treatment in young mice. And after one week of antibiotics, we can see that gut bacterial DNA content is reduced by 80%. And it stays 80% reduced for the duration of the four-week study. All right, so what's the impact of antibiotic treatment on muscle mass? So we can see that data here. We've got muscle weight on the y-axis plotted against three different muscles, the quadriceps, quad, gastrocnemius, gas, or tibialis anterior, TA. Now, these are lower leg muscles. You can see that the quadriceps is located on the upper thigh, the gastrocnemius behind the shin, and the TA, tibialis anterior, in the front of the shin. So for each of these three muscles, we can see that uh, they are reduced, They're, the weight of these three muscles are reduced in antibiotic-treated mice when compared with not treated uh, it, with antibiotics. So antibiotic treatment in young mice reduces muscle mass. All right, so what about the effect of antibiotic treatment on muscle strength? So we can see that data here when looking at muscle strength in the non-antibiotic treated versus antibiotic treated, we can see that antibiotic treat, treated had reduced muscle strength as indicated by grip strength. So from this, we can conclude that antibiotic treatment in young mice reduces both muscle mass and strength. So how can gut bacteria impact muscle mass and strength? So the authors of this study then looked at gut bacterial functions, and this is just a small snapshot, and I'll have a link to the paper in the video's description if you're interested in reading further. So on the left, we've got the untreated mice, and on the right, we've got bacterial gene counts for the antibiotic treated mice. So uh, orange is indicative of higher levels of bacterial gene counts, and green is indicative of lower levels. And more specifically, you can see how the colors go there. So as you go from orange to green, it's higher gene counts to lower gene counts. So what stands out is that both primary and secondary bile acids, or gene counts, or functions, bacterial functions for primary and secondary bile acids, are higher in the non-antibiotic treated when compared with antibiotic treated. In other words, there are lower levels of gene counts for bile acids in the antibiotic treated mice. So that raises the question, could bile acids, BAs, be involved in mechanisms that impact muscle mass and strength? Now, having differences for bacterial functions doesn't always translate into metabolite levels, but the authors of this study looked at total levels of bile acids, the metabolite levels, in the cecum. So the cecum is the beginning of the large intestine, as indicated there. And what we can see is that antibiotic-treated mice have a dramatic reduction in bile acid levels in the cecum. Uh, so we're, we've got somewhere around 350 uh, micrograms per gram of bile acids, and it goes to less than 50 in the antibiotic-treated mice. So, but that doesn't indicate which specific bile acids are decreased. Remember, bile acids are split into primary and secondary. They're not all the same metabolites. So here we're looking at bile acid composition in the antibiotic treated on the right versus the non-treated. And we can see by the different colors that antibiotics alter bile acid composition. So in the non-treated uh, with antibiotic mice, we can see that the major bile acids are deoxycholic acid, DCA in purple, and uh, omega muricolic acid in orange, omega MCA. In contrast, when looking at the uh, bile acid composition in the antibiotic treated mice, you can see a completely different color scheme with the two major bile acids being uh, taurocholic acid, TCA in purple, and taro beta muricolic acid, TBMCA in light blue. Now, if we only looked at the bile acid composition in this figure, we would think that the levels may be the same. But remember, the bile acid levels in at least the cecum were almost completely wiped out in the antibiotic-treated mice. So are absolute levels of Toro Beta MCA different when comparing the antibiotic-treated with, with the non-treated mice? And that's what we can see here, levels of Toro Beta Muricolic Acid um, in feces, and this is in the cecum. So we can see that Toro Beta MCA is significantly higher. In fact, it's almost 20-fold higher in the antibiotic-treated mice when compared with the non-treated mice, which then raises the question, could Toro Beta Muricolic Acid negatively impact muscle mass and or strength? So to give away the answer, it may be. And uh, more specifically, Toro Beta Muricolic Acid, TBMCA, is involved in a mechanism that reduces muscle mass as shown in the figure here. So with, when starting with antibiotics, I showed you that gut bacterial content or gut bacterial DNA is reduced by 80%, and in antibiotic-treated mice, muscle mass, and although it's not shown here, uh, grip strength or uh, muscle strength is also reduced. 
So what's the mechanism? How do you go from having less gut bacterial uh, DNA content to less muscle mass and strength? So we saw that uh, levels of toro beta muricolic acid are increased in the cecum. And so why is that important? Well, toro beta MCA is an inactivator of the farnesoid X receptor, FXR, as shown there in the intestine. And we can see that more specifically here by looking at the percentage of FXR activation as a function of concentration on the x-axis for two different bile acids, including toro beta MCA. So as the toro beta MCA concentration increases, we can see that FXR activation decreases. So what's the link though for having less FXR with muscle mass or strength? So when intestinal FXR is active, FGF15 or FGF19, which is the human version of FGF15, which is found in mice, is released into the blood. So active intestinal FXR, F, uh, FGF15 or FGF19 released into the blood. So, but note that relatively higher levels of toro beta MCA inactivate FXR, which leads to less FGF15 or 19 in the blood. And we can see that here. So we're looking at plasma levels of FGF15 in the, in the antibiotic treated mice versus the non-treated mice. And what we can see is that the antibiotic treated mice have a significant reduction for plasma levels of FGF15, which goes in line with this mechanism for less, uh, more toro beta MCA, uh, less FXR activation, less FGF15 being released into the blood. So what's the link for FGF15 or 19 with muscle? So uh, FGF19 increases muscle mass and strength in young mice, and that's what we're going to see here. And I apologize for the blurry images. This is exactly a screenshot from the paper. That's how the paper's uh, images look. So here we're looking at muscle weight again for those three muscles, quadriceps, gastrocnemius, and TA. And now we've got three groups. So VP, blue circles, no antibiotic treatment. AP, antibiotic treated. And if you remember, muscle mass for each of these muscles was significantly reduced in the antibiotic treated mice when compared with untreated. But now we've got a third group, AF, which is antibiotic treated FGF19. Again, this is the human version of, FG, uh, of FGF19 that was then injected into mice. And it was injected uh, just under the skin uh, subcut sub subcutaneously. And what we can see is in that AF treated mice, so mice that were injected with FGF19, there were significant increases in muscle mass for each of these three muscles in antibiotic treated mice. All right, so what about muscle strength? So once again, we can see that antibiotics reduced uh, muscle strength and uh, in, when looking at the orange versus the blue circles, antibiotic treated versus untreated. But in the FGF19 treated antibiotic or FGF19 treated antibiotic treated mice, there was a small but significant increase in muscle strength as shown there. So from that, we can see that FGF19 increases muscle mass and strength in young mice. So what about aged mice? FGF19 also increases muscle mass and strength in aged mice, as we can see here. So now we've got also three groups. And we're looking at muscle weight on the y-axis plotted against uh, the soleus and the tibial tibialis anterior, TA. So uh, we haven't introduced the soleus yet, but that's a muscle that's located uh, on the back of the shin, just under the gastrocnemius, and it's a long muscle. So uh, again, three groups, six-month-old mice, open circles, black squares, 25-month-old mice, and these are old mice. And what we can see is that during aging, there's reduced muscle mass of the soleus and TA, 25-month-old mice versus six-month-old mice. But now we've got that third group, third group again, old mice treated with FGF19. And what we can see is that there's significantly increased muscle mass for both of these muscles in old mice that were treated with FGF19. All right, so what about muscle strength? So they looked at grip strength. And first, when looking at the aging effect, we can see that uh, aged mice have about half of the grip strength when compared with young mice, six-month-old mice. And then aged mice that were treated with FGF19 had significantly increased grip strength, as shown there by the green arrow. All right, so this then raises the obvious question. Can FGF19 treatment improve muscle mass and strength in older adults? And unfortunately, there aren't any RCTs that have evaluated that question yet. All right, so to recap, as a mechanism for decreased muscle mass and strength, at least in antibiotic-treated mice, a bile acid, toro beta MCA, reduces FXR activation, thereby reducing FGF15-19, which then raises the question, can other bile acids increase FGF19 signaling in contrast with the data we saw in this video, where it reduced uh, a specific bile acid led to reductions in FXR activation and FGF15 slash 19 signaling, are there other bile acids that can increase FGF19 signaling, thereby increasing muscle mass and strength, or maybe even other pathways that bile acids, bile acids can impact that could increase muscle mass and strength? So I've got a video uh, in mind, so stay tuned for that data. 
All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.